can uh, just use the cruise control and steer. That's easier. Say hi. Say hi. Oh, woof. Woof. Yes, Benny agrees. This thing is hot. This is the new Mo Raider S1 fully remote controlled lawnmower. And yes, I know what you're saying. You're saying, Brian, have we got so lazy now that we can sit in a chair, drink a beer, hold your dog and mow the lawn? You wouldn't be incorrect with that question. However, there are quite a few scenarios that make this new lawnmower really, really shine. But before we get into those scenarios, we're gonna dive into the nuts and bolts of what makes this Mo Raider run, right? Yeah, bruh. Right. I'm not sure if it's that apparent of how large this unit really is. This is no toy at all, as you can tell from the unboxing. First of all, it is boxed very well. There's a very, very minimal assembly. Basically, you have to screw on the rear wheels and all the also the front wheels and just put together the bag. That's it, you're ready to go. So weight-wise, it's gonna be 115 to 135 pounds. It all depends on what battery you have and also if you have two or four wheel drive. Two wheel drive, two separate motors, four wheel drive, four motors, obviously that is going to be heavier. Now the battery wise, it actually uses a lithium iron phosphate battery. Now we've seen these batteries before in a lot of the solar generators that we've also tested. The benefit of these batteries is that they're way more stable in more extreme conditions. So cold or especially hot hot conditions. This is where you're going to be using a lawnmower a lot, depending on where you live. And this is also going to give you a lot more longevity. This is rated for over 1,500 cycles, of basically from being empty to fully charged, 1,500, and that's a lot more than a lithium ion battery. So it does come in a 12 or 18 amp uh, hour size. And at the launch, this is going to come up with the 18 amp hour battery. It's interesting how they designed the Mo Raider. So you have your separate cutting deck here. So you have a 21 inch path. It's a regular size blade. And then you have this frame structure around it, which houses you know, the, your, your processor, your battery. And it's, it allows for a lot of air to get in there as well to keep everything cool. And that's very, very important. But these rails are great for handling this big bad boy. Whether you're doing it by yourself, if you are, I would recommend you take the battery out first just to make it a little bit lighter or get someone else to help you. Just you grab on pretty well anywhere along these handles. It is super, super robust. This will charge to full in just 90 minutes with the 600 watt charger and the runtime anywhere from two hours and 20 minutes up to even three hours. It all depends, of course, what kind of grass, the conditions, is it wet, how tall the grass is, and if you're driving on any inclines or anything, that's all gonna factor into it. Right now, it is still winter time, spring's a few days away, and we don't really have a lot of grass to cut yet. We're a few weeks away, uh, and it's coming, but some of these examples aren't really going to be indicative of what this is really capable of. Uh, you can actually see a lot of other examples on uh, Mo Raiders' YouTube channel. Uh, but I just wanted to get this video out because they are launching this right now and a lot of you guys have a lot of questions. So I'm trying to answer as many of these questions as I can. So we have battery size, we have run time, we have weight. Then we get to the cutting height, we have five steps of height anywhere from 1.5 inches up to 4.3 inches. It should cover most everyone's needs. Uh, one thing to note, if you do get the four-wheel drive, you can actually go a little bit lower, a little bit uh, from that. But yeah, there it is, there, there's the deck. Now we mentioned this has a 21 inch uh, cutting path and unlike, there are some other robotic lawnmowers out there, some of them are autonomous as well, but the difference is those ones are kind of like Roombas for your lawn. They kind of have little discs with sometimes little razor blades on them, and they're great. You can send them out every couple days and they can maintain your lawn, uh, but this is the full-on real lawnmower blade, and you can tackle a lot larger jobs with this unit. A lot of people are commenting though, why do I need a remote control lawnmower when I can just get an autonomous one like I just discussed earlier? And that's a good point. Well, the autonomous ones do take some setup, including sometimes you have to actually 
embed a perimeter wire so it knows where the boundaries are, or the newer systems now coming out use an RTK. It uses a GPS, a, nav a satellite system to actually navigate. So you actually map out your area and you can put no-go zones and it will just stay within that area, which is great. However, not everyone lives in an area that you can get a clear satellite signal. If you live in an area full of trees, it's not gonna work. Also, this system is not the simplest to actually set up. So if you're not really tech savvy, you know, you might have someone set it up for you. That might actually help, but they're, they're not as simple as what this is. And third thing is, those are permanent systems, meaning if I set it up for this house, let's say I want to actually go mow my parents' uh, lawn and I want to put this in a trailer, put it into the SUV and go mow it. Well, an autonomous one, you cannot do that without having to re set everything and set it up all from scratch to that area because as soon as you move that satellite antenna, your base station, it changes all the calibration for everything. So this could be actually used even for some light uh, commercial duty stuff, you know, maybe in addition to some of your other garden tools. But if you have your heart set on autonomous, guess what? Mo Raider is coming out with an autonomous version <laughs> of their lawnmower as well. And uh, yeah, look for that coming soon. Quickly going over the controller, hey, it's a remote. But you know what I like is they've recessed the sticks quite deep in so it's not easy to bump them, which is a really good safety feature. Left side is basically you're gonna go forward or backward and your right sticks are going to go and turn your mower. And of course, this is a zero turn, so it can swivel right around. Below here, you have your blade speed. You can go manual or smart. Smart, it's going to adjust depending on the conditions. And if you go manual, below here, you have different manual speeds. Everything from economy all the way to turbo, which gives you 3,400 RPM blade speed. Right side, your basic drive speed so you go turtle all the way to a rabbit there's our power button this here is an emergency shutoff and it's the same as the two red ones on the unit if anything is to happen you need to shut down just push that you can see we have emergency stop triggered the lights have turned red on the unit as well so we can just touch that um, and it's going to say press c2 to clear and I'm just gonna press that and we're back into green again. So in order to engage the blades, you're going to press the two top triggers like this. And you're going to touch the screen. Touch the okay. Once it started, all you have to do is actually press one or the other, but one of the buttons always has to be pressed in order for that blade to go, and that is a safety feature here. Now, these are very special buttons. They're kind of like your, your cheat buttons or your cruise control. So the middle one is like a cruise control, and since this does not use a GPS RTK system, which uses navigation or satellites, this uses just basically the IMU measurements. So you have an accelerometer, for instance, and it's going to try to keep you as straight as possible when you hit that. But once you're using it, you can make adjustments if you need to on your right stick here to center it a little bit better. I tried it on our sidewalk and it's a pretty long sidewalk and it actually went all the way down without any correction at all. Now, once you get to the end, you can either push your left or right. Now these are 180 degree buttons. It'll turn this whole unit. For example, I'm going to press this right turn right here. There we go. And it turned it 180 degrees around. I'm going to press it again. Just that easy. And we can go left or right side. So that is the controller in a nutshell. C1 and C2 are just kind of like okay buttons and for future uh, uses, but very, very simple.
So using this, it is so simple. I've actually given Kid the controller to several neighbors stop. and we've mowed all sorts of areas in our neighborhood here. And the number one consensus is how easy it is. As we said, you just turn on that battery, turn on the controller, and it's so precise. Even if you're going along edges, you can actually go very accurately. Uh, one thing to note though, like right now, the ground is soft and there's not a lot of deep roots and not a lot of grass right now. Uh, but because this is a zero turn, meaning it uses a differential of wheel speed to turn itself and swivel those front wheels, softer ground, it may actually do a little bit of tearing of your lawn for that. And that, that applies to all zero turn machines. You know, if you want to el eliminate that, just don't do a zero turn. Just do it nice, big, huge loops around your yard. You can do that as well. So that's really good. Another thing, this is pretty fast. It does 3.4 miles per hour, or about five and a half kilometers an hour, uh, which is definitely faster than a regular walking speed. I don't think that you'd be mowing if for a smaller area, he wouldn't be using the full speed of that at all. Um, and um, yeah, one thing I would like would be kind of cool if you were actually transporting this, say you're going from one house to the next house to the next house, if it would be neat if, if it had a follow me feature. That would be yeah, kind of a cool. Maybe down, maybe the autonomous version might have that. Cruise control. And you can see the status lights go blue. And of course, if we wanted to, we could go and, oh, we're gonna go around that tree. We could go slower too, but what fun is that, right? This is like the medium speed, by the way. We're not, we're not in full. And to be more accurate, I should get closer to it, but I just wanna see the range. They say 20 meters. This goes way beyond 20 meters. Now I'm gonna go into the menu. We didn't really talk a lot about that, but there are so many different settings and we're gonna go into advance and we're gonna turn on the ultrasonic sensor. So there are sensors in the front and on the side of the Morator S1 and it will stop when it reaches an obstacle. So we're just gonna try that out right now. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to drive this toward myself, okay? I'm not gonna have the blades on and we'll see. So, so gonna go to, I'm, I'm not gonna go full speed, but I'm standing here and it stopped. Thank goodness, all right. And you can see the lights, the status lights on the side have changed. Now they're red for basically an emergency stop. Uh, so it's, it's sensing that, and so that's really good. And you can turn that on or off. And um, it, will, it says obstacle detected. I'm not sure if you can see this, but it does say obstacle detected right on the screen right there okay so we have to go and uh, go to clear and we're going back green again another common question what about warranty and after sale support uh, at this time right now this is getting a two-year warranty we mentioned it has that really robust lithium iron phosphate battery. You're not gonna have to worry about that for years, for sure. And um, as for service, this is a brand new startup company, but they are uh, opening up distributorships already in all sorts of countries, especially in the US. In Canada, I'm sure there will be. I'm not sure where they are right now, but uh, in dealing with Mo Raider so far, their support has been very good. But yeah, it is a big unit, and it's not something that you wanna have to send back you know, overseas or anything. So hopefully they will get uh, that network set up really, really quick. Let's talk about some of the scenarios where you could use this remote controlled mower. Number one, for me, I have massive allergies. I'm constantly taking lots of allergy pills. So I try to limit myself the, the, the amount of exposure I have to fresh grass and pollen. Yes, I'm still outside, but I'm not right into the thick of things using this um, mow rater with remote control. I can be far away, farther than you can actually see what you're actually mowing. So range is not an issue with this at all. Second thing, if you have limited mobility issues, whether it's a permanent or a temporary um, mobility issue, this is great. Maybe you wanna handle your own lawn, you have a, a back or a knee or a hip problem, whatever, you can still enjoy handling your own yard and um, yeah, very, very easy to use. You can even do it from inside if you really wanted to, if you had a good view of your yard. 
If you have large inclines to mow, this is perfect for that. So it's like a mountain goat. We haven't tested the four wheel drive, by the way, but based on the videos and based on how the two wheel drive works, I can see it working very well. Remember, it's always gonna be limited to the conditions though. You have wet grass, depending on what angles, you know, you may get some slippage on there. You can get different all-terrain tires, by the way, for this Mo Raider. These tires are also solid, solid rubber. They have some nice pliability to them, which is nice. So they get some pretty decent traction on them. The next thing is if you have an area, for instance, that's hard to get into, maybe low hanging branches, you could use this for mowing or even for sucking because there are different attachments. You can get a high lift vacuum blade for this and you can vacuum everything up. Imagine going through under the shrubs and trees and doing that. There's also an auto dumping bag option you can get. We do not have that here. I've just seen it in videos that will be coming out as an option as well. And someone on the Facebook group even mentioned they'd want one of these because the area they mow has a lot of snakes in it. And I, I don't disagree. If I was mowing where there are a lot of snakes, I would definitely use one of these instead of going and stepping around that area, hands down. How fitting. I'm listening in the background. I'm not sure if you can hear it. There's a gas mower going on uh, just down the street there. It's kind of annoying considering this is electric. We didn't even touch on that. It's how much quieter this is than a gas mower, meaning you can use it to mow in the early morning or later at nighttime without bothering your neighbors, like, like that one right there. Going up the hill a little bit. Well, we're getting a little slippage there, but it's basically moss there. Final thoughts on this. I love the build quality on here. So far, hey, we haven't really put it through its major paces. We're gonna let the grass grow in the next two to three weeks, as long as it can go so I can really challenge it. But so far, so good. Battery life has been excellent on here. We mentioned the quietness. Uh, and the general consensus on this is just how easy it is to operate, not just to actually set it up, but when you're using the remote control, it takes you no time to figure it out. Okay, the number one question asked, hands down, has got to be, how much is this unit worth? Well, right now, they are actually launching it on Kickstarter, but this is not a concept at all. They're actually in full production right now. Uh, right now, it is March, uh, and... They're anticipating deliveries like in May, depending on where you live. The United States has a distribution center already for these. So it's perfect time for mowing season, absolutely. Uh, the two wheel drive and the four wheel drive will be offered with the 18 amp hour battery. And that's gonna go for $29.99 and $39.99 US dollars. But for early backers, you're gonna get 40% off, which makes this two wheel drive with the 18 amp hour battery just 1800 bucks and I honestly think that's actually quite reasonable if you compare it to the price of what a regular electric self-propelled mower goes for uh, it's not that much more plus you're getting a way larger battery on here and I wanted to just put this into per perspective this Lozy SC10 short course RC truck here the chassis alone on this one here is $650. That does not include the speed controller, the motor, the steering servo, or any of the radio electronics, or the battery. You add all that up, you add on a charger for the battery, you add on a radio on this RC truck, comes out to actually the same price, if not more, than this mower that's going to actually do a lot more work for you. And is it as fun as this truck? Maybe not, but you're actually getting some work done with this and having fun at the same time. So yeah, just to put it into perspective because you know people are like, oh my goodness, $1,800. You know, RC stuff is not inexpensive. And especially when you add in you know, a power blade, ultrasonic sensors for safety, all the other uh, software that's going on and a super robust 125 pound unit. Yeah, it's not bad at all. So if you're interested and want more information on the Mo Raider, I will leave a link in the video description. And if you wanna buy one and use that link, it does help the channel out. 
doesn't cost you any extra at all. So I really encourage you, if you are interested in this, you know, to use that link. But you know what? The moderator might not be for everyone, but for the people that have the application where you can use this, I think it is a great option. I'm really excited to see what other products that this company is gonna come out with. So uh, that's it for today's video. Hope to see you on the next Everyday Review. Ciao.